In today's video, we will be looking at the Noctua NH L9A AM4 CPU cooler. So this is the Chromax black version, which is basically an all black cooler and all black design. This is like a more updated version. They actually had like a brown fan version, but obviously that's not quite as nice. Now we got this in a deal where we brought the ITX motherboard for £60 and we got this thrown in. So this was a nice little bonus. I'm looking forward to unbox this today. We'll go through the unboxing, like I said, we'll go through the installation on the AM4 platform and then we'll give you some performance benchmarks in terms of cooling and in terms of sort of noise levels and what have you. Now usually this retails for £50 on Amazon UK, so we really do have a really good deal here. This is actually pretty good cooler all the way up to a Ryzen 5800X. Really once you get to the 50 900x and the 5950x it starts to become a bit too much for this cooler but this is a low profile cooler so it's going to fit in itx cases and motherboards perfectly it's, it's going to be 100 percent compatible with ram and pcie slots and what have you and hopefully motherboard clearance and what have you so yeah i'm really looking forward to unboxing this now so here we are with the unboxing of the noctua nh L9A AM4 Chromax Black CPU cooler. This is the 37mm low profile version. Like I said, it's got the RAM compatibility and the PCIe cards compatibility too. Just on the back there. There we go. So a little uh, sort of dear customer thing. Uh, just saying thank you and like installation installation instructions and what have you. Not a Noctua sort of badge there, which is nice. We have thermal paste here. Is this going to come out? Or is it? Yeah. So we have the thermal paste here, which is nice. So we'll, we'll use that thermal paste when we install it. There we go. There we go. We have a sort of like extension for your fan, low noise adapter. So if you want to use that as a low noise adapter, you can, but I don't think I'll use that. And then we have the screws here, which is going to go into your motherboard to screw the cooler. And here's the cooler itself. Nope. Oh, there's the plate and everything from it. There we go. These just must be spare screws, I think. I don't think you actually need those. So as we can see, this is the back plate here. So I think that it will go that way beneath your motherboard and then this will just sit above like that and it will just go on to like there. Obviously, just want to put a little bit of thermal paste there and then we just screw it in. So you just screw it in from the other side. But So this is everything in the box and just take a bit of more of a close look at the cooler. So we've got four, four pin... PWM fan just on top of the actual heat sink and it's it's really small little heat sink as well It's going to be perfectly fine for our little ITX motherboard. So that's all good So let's move on to the AM4 installation process. So the installation on the AM4 platform pretty simple Just going to lift up our retention arm here Fully up to 90 degrees and then where the little triangle is here, and then you just aim it across, um, the right and just goes across here with the CPU. That's all fitted in fine. And then we just uh, put down the lever. So what we're going to do is just put a little bit of cooling, uh, put a little bit of foam paste on the top here. That should be enough. So it's going to take the board, turn it upside down, and then hopefully just match up the holes. So we're just going to put the back plate on now and then screw the screws in. Now 
then we're just going to screw it all the way down basically now, go from one to the other. So there we go, it's all uh, installed on this side. And we're simply just going to, uh, gonna have to just wrap it around this way. <laughs> Never mind. There we go. So there we go, the installation is complete of the, of the Noctua NH-L9A AM4 CPU cooler. So we saw in our testing that the Noctua NH-L9A AM4 CPU cooler running at idle speeds in an ambient temperature of around about sort of 25 degrees centigrade as it is particularly hot today. The, the CPU was running about 45 degrees centigrade to maybe 50 degrees centigrade idling. So, as you can see, this cooler isn't amazing, but there's enough performance there. When we run Cinebench and put 100% load on the CPU, we could see it was getting up towards about 90 degrees centigrade. So this was getting towards the maximum of what we'd want for our CPU. And it was a little bit louder, obviously, but overall, it did its job, and it's good enough. Now the only thing I would say is that if you're using this on an ITX board, be a little bit careful if you are using the M.2 drive, because the M.2 drive is very, very close to the CPU socket, obviously. I would probably suggest a SSD. You wouldn't have all the heat round around the CPU area, because what was happening, even in my open test bench, a lot of the heat was being created and wasn't being able to be moved away from the CPU area. So sometimes when I was using the M.2, this would increase the CPU uh, temperature up to sometimes, sometimes even at idle, about 65 or even 70 degrees idle, which then if you put a load on the CPU, it'd, it'd easily hit towards the 95 maximum or, or, or even a bit higher. So as you could see, really using, a, using an SSD did help this because the, the heat kind of was kind of trans, transferred away from where the M.2 drive was. But... Overall, do I think this is a good cooler for £50? It's a difficult one because for £50, it's a lot of money. And if you're not using this with an ITX build in a small form factor case, then there's so many better coolers out there. So overall, I probably wouldn't get this. But if you are looking for a very small cooler, a very low profile cooler for your AM4 platform, this will do the job. And even at £50, it's still fairly reasonable for an ITX build. So it's not too bad, but I'd probably say even even running the stock cooler wouldn't be that much more hotter for the CPU, wouldn't, wouldn't run that much hotter. We were only running a Ryzen 3600 as well, so it wasn't like we were right, running like a uh, 5600X, which probably would have put even more uh, load on the CPU cooler and would have put even more heat out, I would have thought. So, okay if you're going to use a low to mid-range CPU on this platform, but overall probably would avoid this cooler if you are using, certainly if you're using a high-end CPU, you, you, you really do need to get a lot better CPU cooler or even move towards a liquid cooler all-in-one or something like that. Yeah, so overall, hope you like this video, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.